Okay, good morning. Okay, good morning and welcome to today's Finance Committee meeting, a break from the budget hearings we've been holding uh, over the last two days. Uh, my name is Council Member Daniel Drum and I'm Chair of the Committee. We've been joined by Council Member Steve Matteo, Council Member Barry Grudenchik, Council Member Keith Powers, Council Member Adrian Adams, Council Member Andy Cohen, and our Majority Leader, Lori Cumbo. Hi, Lori. Today, the Committee will be voting on six items a transparency resolution and five LU items. Let's start with the transparency resolution, which sets forth the new designation and changes in the designation of certain organizations receiving local aging and youth discretionary funding and funding pursuant to certain initiatives in the budget. Organizations appearing in the resolution that have not yet completed the pre-qualification process conducted by the Mayor's Office of Contract Services the council or another entity are identified in the attached charts with an asterisk. As with all transparency resolutions, council members will have to sign a disclosure form indicating whether or not a conflict exists with any group on the attached list. If any council member has a potential conflict of interest with any of the organizations listed, he or she has the opportunity to disclose the conflict at the time of their vote. As a reminder, please disclose any conflicts you may have with proposed subcontractors used by organizations sponsored by discretionary funding. These disclosures must be made before the subcontractor can be approved. Marley Marcellus from the, from the General Counsel's Office is here and can assist you with any questions or concerns regarding disclosures. Next, we have the land use items. The first is 153 Manhattan Avenue in Council Chambers, in Council, excuse me, in Council Member Levine's District in Manhattan, which would provide a partial 40-year Article 11 tax exemption to support the preservation of 64 units of low-income rental housing. The second is 1025 to 1027 Leggett Avenue in Councilmember Ayala's district in the Bronx, which would provide a full 40-year Article 11 tax exemption to support the preservation of 48 units of low-income co-op housing. The third is Monshalu Grand in Councilmember Cohen's district in the Bronx, which will provide a full 40-year Article 11 tax exemption to support the construction of 152 units of low-income rental housing. The fourth is Grover Green in Councilmember Reynoso's district in Brooklyn, which will provide a partial 35-year Article 11 tax exemption to support the preservation of 358 units of low-income rental housing. The fifth and last item is Livonia Regina in Councilmember Brannon's district in Brooklyn, which will provide a partial 40-year Article 11 tax exemption to support the preservation of 168 units of low-income rental housing. Are there any questions on any of today's items? Seeing none, uh, before I ask uh, Billy Martin, committee clerk, to call the roll, I'd like to remind my colleagues that the Finance Committee will continue executive budget hearings tomorrow morning, Thursday, May 10th, uh, 10 a.m. in the chambers when we hear from the Taxi and Limousine Commission and the Department of Environmental Protection. Um, Billy, would you now call the roll, please? Lee Martin, Committee Clerk, roll call vote Committee on Finance. All items are coupled. Chair Drum. I vote aye. Cohen. Aye. Cumbo. I vote aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Adams. Aye. Moya. Aye. Powers. Aye. Matteo. A vote of eight in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted by the committee. Okay, and with that, we'll keep the vote open for about uh, 10 or 15 more minutes. <laughs> Council Member Van Bramer. I vote aye. Okay, thank you. Council Member Van Bramer. I vote aye. 